I praise God for the way he just continues to guide us and correct us. And he's just so, so interested in eliminating division in the body. Can you discern, especially during political seasons, just how divided we are? And the question I'm asking in this word is, is anyone listening? I have a dream from the Lord, and I'm going to get into it, and I'm going to actually show you the cost of division. There are lives at stake. The Lord showed me there are people who are not going to hear the gospel when we're divided. We've been given the authority in the earth. We've been given great responsibility. And yes, the Lord's grace is more than sufficient. But we have a part to play, and it's not going to get done when we're divided. And we cannot allow the political stuff to get us there. We can't take the bait. So I'm going to get into this in just a moment, but I want to pray first. Lord, I pray now. You speak to me as the oracle of the Lord. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray and ask for your help now. Amen. Amen. In this particular dream, I was in the Windy City, a place where I know the Lord, the God, wants to move things and by his power cause things to change. He wants to influence the church. He wants to blow through the church. But unfortunately in the stream, I was, I was watching and witnessing a church meeting in which people were arguing and fighting. And what I saw was an argument that lasted a very long time. And the subject matter was not even apparent. God doesn't care about the subject matter. He sees how we are divided. I cannot tell you what they were arguing about. All I knew was they were all committed to being divided. They were not coming together. They did not see the value in coming together. They were not budging. They were deadlocked in their communication. And after a while, I moved to the front of the room. And there was a boy there. And I know by the spirit, this was an angel. This was an angel that was there hoping to speak to the church, the people that were at the meeting. He was there to, to be a messenger, but they weren't listening. They weren't paying attention. The Bible says that we should be quick to hear, right? Slow to speak, slow to anger. And that is the anger verse for this dream. We should be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We cannot hear the Lord when we're fighting. So there was so much potential. We're in the Windy City. You know, this represents the potential, the power available. Power was available in this meeting. But because they were arguing and were not available to hearing what the angel came to say, they missed an opportunity to do kingdom work and it impacted a certain person because the boy was there and he was holding a snake. This angel was holding a snake. And I come to find out later, this snake was like a visual aid that the angel was going to use as he released the message to the church, which was about a boy in Thailand or Vietnam, an Asian country, I don't know which. And he was there to tell them, you need to help this boy because he took a vow to eat a snake because he's so hungry and so impoverished, he thought this is his only escape, giving his soul to the devil. This was a small child, a boy, who was committed to giving himself to the devil so that he could eat. And this angel came with a message about how they could impact this boy's life by raising money and bringing hope to him and his people and his family in a place that was impoverished and destitute. And the angel never spoke. He was waiting. The angel was in the room waiting for the arguing to stop so he could speak. Think about this. This is, the, this is what's happening in the spirit. When we're arguing, God is still there wanting to speak truth. But we're arguing over things that are not true. We're being distracted by things that don't matter. And we're not listening. We're not available to even hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. 
And at stake was this boy who had vowed his life to the devil because he's so hungry out of desperation. And so I was disturbed by this story because I was privy to the story since I was the only person in the room that was listening and paying attention. Now, the boy never spoke, but he had material there that I was able to read that spoke about this boy. He was this boy's guardian angel. The Bible says that uh, the angels for children always behold the face of the father. They're always in his company. He was one of these angels. And so now, as we're waiting for the argument to end, and it never did, he gave me money because I was one of the few in the worship meeting who was paying attention to the Lord instead of paying attention to the argument. Really, that's a big lesson is we need to be paying attention to the Lord, not fighting each other. So he gave me two dollars and then he wanted me to give the two dollars back to him. The Lord wants to give resources to the church so that the church can bless the world. But there are some resources that we don't receive because we're arguing. We're divided. Because I was taking heed to listen, I received a reward. It wasn't for me. It was literally, I'm, I'm a resource. I'm getting from the source, the Father, to resource. And so I gave it right back to the angel. This was literally a metaphor. The Lord showing how the kingdom of God is supposed to uh, transact kingdom business, receiving from the Father in order to bless the world, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. But my heart was desperate for this boy who had given his heart to the, to the devil because of his hunger. He just had practical needs that weren't being met, and he was so desperate, he would try anything. And I began to pray for this boy, and I began to pray in tongues for this boy in this dream. I was so overwhelmed by his story. And I began ripping off pieces of my clothing like they do in the Old Testament. When they tore their robe, my heart was vexed and, and overwhelmed by sorrow and anger over this boy's situation. And so this was where the Lord was showing just how dire this man's, this boy's need was, his great need, how dire his situation was. And no one in the room was available to even hear his story. No one in the, in the room was even available to partake in the kingdom uh, solution for this boy and the area of the world where he lives. So the church is being paralyzed and disabled by division. We can't operate as we should because we're fighting. I didn't care about my clothes. I didn't care about my money. I just cared about this boy and his story and the fact that he had given his life to the devil because he just wanted to eat. And the angel, the boy, the angel standing there still never spoke. He stood there as I prayed. After I gave him my two dollars, he was silent and he stood in front of me as I prayed. And this is what I wrote down, that he was an angel on assignment to help me pray for the boy who had vowed to eat a serpent for the devil. The Bible says, if you ask of the Lord that he won't give you a serpent, well, why? Because that's how the devil acts. The devil gives you venom. The devil gives you poison. The devil gives you that which is bad for you. The devil wants you dead. He steals, kills, and destroys. And so this boy was willing to take the bait of the devil because he couldn't ask the father for certain things. He didn't know to ask the father. Hmm. Oh, how I wish we saw the cost of our division. Oh, how I wish we understood. Lord, I pray the church will see the need to be of the same mind, speaking the same thing. I pray for repentance. I repent for the church. Keep us in perfect peace. When our hearts are overwhelmed, I pray you'll lead us to the rock that is higher, that we won't fight one another. Jesus, this is my request. Amen. It's a tough one. It's tough to realize that our division has a cost. and Someone's salvation can be hinging on the fact that we're just not listening. God sends messengers, but that doesn't mean that we hear them. Jesus was sent, and almost in the entire nation of Israel did not know him. <sighs> we can't fall for the devil's schemes. This is why he sends the prophetic dreams, so that we'll know the schemes of the devil, that we'll know the times and the seasons and what we are to do. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger.
If you want to learn more about our ministry, go to faithfireworldwide.com. You can sign up for our newsletter there as well. You can be alerted to our words and be alerted to our activities. You can also give into our ministry, our worldwide international crusades and our community outreach here in North Carolina. We are spreading the gospel. We're, we're preaching the gospel of salvation. We're seeing people healed and set free and delivered from demonic spirits. And we want you to partner with us if that is what the Lord would have you to do. And we are looking for monthly donors, always looking for partners to take us to the nations. I've been invited to Honduras for 10 days and uh, Colombia and beyond. And so would love to have you partner with us. There's always a need. I'll tell you that much. And you can also give at Linktree slash Faith Fire and learn more about our ministry at that link. There's so much there. It's chock full of information if you want to learn about our ministry and our activities. Our mission is revival in the church and awakening in the world. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Until we see each other again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. I bless God for you. Take care and we'll see you very soon. Bye.